What's up agents, Wolf here, welcome to another Division 2 build video. In today's video, I'm going to showcase one of the best tank builds in the game currently. We're going to be using the Catharsis Mask and Foundry Bulwark gear set. This build is going to be great for soloing any kind of difficult content in the game, primarily for PvE, but you can use this in PvP. So you can go and do solo Legendary Summit, you can do even solo countdown with this build or any solo legendary mission. Obviously, any kind of heroic, that's just going to be a cakewalk for you. We can run up to NPCs, pull out our shield that never dies, by the way. Not only do we not die, but the shield never dies because we have got over 140% repair skills. And repair skills uh, increase the amount of healing the Artificer Hive does. So what you do, you pull your shield out, you take huge amounts of damage from your shield, just as your shield's about to uh, get destroyed, one stim from the Artificer Hive completely regens the shield's health, which is crazy. And if you are going to take too much damage, you will, after you've taken all the damage with the shield, because of the Foundry Bulwark set, the agent or we get healed huge amounts over time. And then when we pull out our shield again, you can do it vice versa. The Catharsis Mask will also be healing us in this time. It is unbelievable. It feels like we've got a healer in our team if you're playing solo, just with this setup. There's quite a few tricks going on here. So hopefully you guys do enjoy this video. It is quite a unique one. I have made different kinds of um, tank builds with Foundry Bulwark in the past, but this one is definitely by far the strongest. So let's take a look at the specialization we are going to be using for this build, because there are a few things I want to talk about. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this. So let's take a look. So technician is going to be quite important with builds like this you can use whatever specialization you want but then you might have to use different talents because you don't have the artificer hive there's no point running repair skills so i definitely recommend for this setup even though i always say adapt the build to suit your own playstyles, the specialization is important because we need to have the artificer hive so stacking repair skills is not easy when we're trying to stack other things well like crit chance crit damage regen things like that but this is very nice because i've got a talent that gives us a hundred percent repair skills and i'm going to show you guys how that works shortly so the artificer hive automatically uh, sends stims to your shield and constantly regens it every couple of seconds after the bar is finished cooling down so make sure you do select this it's just two good shields are still very good in pve and the shield will help you survive if you're a new player or veteran player you will be loving this and because we've got the chameleon we can still hit really really hard high rpm chameleon assault rifle with over i think it's like almost 400k a bullet a crit which is really really good we also get an extra skill tier, which is great, and doing damage to drones and to any kind of skill proxies like robotic dogs, the mini tanks, things like that. This helps a lot because especially if you're going to be using this build in solo summit or even a solo legendary mission, which you can use this build in, this is going to be great for that. So make sure you have got assault rifle damage activated or whatever gun you want to be using. And then let's get into the description. Let's take a look at the build. So we have got the chameleon assault rifle. This gun works great because we're going to be, you know, we, we don't have the highest amount of damage. This build is more specced into survivability and being a tank. As you guys know, this is the whole point of this video. So when we look at the Chameleon, I think it's really, really powerful because we've got that, get that extra crit chance. It is difficult to achieve max crit chance with this gun. Now, keep in mind the accuracy is not very good. So I would recommend using this gun close range. That's the only drawback with it, but it's worth it when you begin hitting so much damage with a high mag and high rpm it's really really powerful so we get hitting 30 headshots grants 20 percent crit chance and 50 percent critical hit damage for 45 seconds this will mean mean that we get huge amounts of crit damage so don't be fooled by the amount of crit damage we have on this build this will give us an extra 50 percent and if you are struggling with crit chance you can also just keep this in mind just get the stacks body shots give us 90 percent weapon damage which is just really really good when you test this build in the firing range, which I was doing, I wasn't getting high numbers, but as soon as you take it into combat, it's so powerful in a mission or whatever kind of content you're do using this gun in. Very strong. Then the reload speed is really nice. It's actually clutch, especially when the NPCs push you. So try and get all the stacks up. It is quite important, but the gun is great. I really do recommend using it. There are many other guns you can use, but honestly, this is the one to go for. If you want to go for close range from us, long range, SOCOM MK16 or Police M4. So the Dark Winter SMG is my secondary. It's really up to what secondary gun you want to use. I'm not going to delve too far into that. The Orbit Pistol, this is going to help me get extra critical damage on top of that. So just keep in mind, guys, from this gun, we're going to be having 50% uh, crit damage and then an additional 40% uh, uh, crit damage on top of that, which is really, really good. That's a lot of crit damage on top of the baseline weapon damage we're already getting from the gun's body shot stacking. 
So this is really good. You can see that we can get huge amounts of damage considering we have got 1.8 million armor. We can still hit high numbers. So with this setup, I have used the Memento bag. I have tried the Scorpio shotgun, which does work well. Those were different videos I've made in the past. So I do recommend utilizing this setup. You're going to probably be wondering what I'm using on the backpack, but we'll get to that last because it is quite, there's a few things I need to explain in detail here. That's depending on how much armor you have. So this backpack is going to determine how it's going to be dependent on how much armor you want to spec in this build. If you want to hit harder or tank less, go for more reds. That's really up to you guys. Honestly, really, really is up to you. If I'm going for more, almost all blues, I need to have one yellow because it helps my artificer hive. Otherwise, I won't be healing my shield enough. So we're not reliant on the shield, but as I said before, you can tank damage with the shield, then just be able to face trade without it as well because the foundry bulwark works really well with the shield let's go through that first so it's it's really up to you how much armor you want to go for so the foundry bulwark so we get 10 percent total armor which is really good armor region shield health 50 percent, which is nice with this build i feel like it's, it works perfectly with a setup like this so makeshift repairs whenever you or your shield take damage 20 percent of that amount is repaired to both over 15 seconds so this is really good and if it bugs out if you're not getting the healing take one piece off and put it back on that's how you normally fix it so this is great guys 20 percent is taken out whatever damage an npc is given to you you can see by the bar at the bottom of your, of your health bar you'll see how it's filling up and draining that's when you know you're getting the buff it's so strong this is really good this is why when you pull out the shield your shield takes all of the damage therefore when your shield goes away or you pull it away from your character or put it away you not just get destroyed you actually get healed so fast it's one of the highest healing rates you can have in the game so it's definitely worth using bulwark with this gear set it is the tankiest set in the game right now it's very powerful so with the chest piece we actually get makeshift repairs from the 20 to 30 percent which is really good the bag is good but i just wanted to try something different and the talent we're going to be using you need obviously you can't use the foundry bag so huge amounts of healing it's very strong give it a try so the four piece every single piece i have actually gone for crit chance or crit damage it's up to you how much critical hit chance you have on this build so i didn't really need that much crit chance because i'm using the chameleon hopefully you guys try it first or and then maybe see how you feel after a bit of testing but crit chance is the way to go you don't have to go for crit chance because the baseline weapon damage will be good headshot damage you can go for more regen if you would like because on this build the region isn't i know it is more of a tanky region but we've only got 22k because we don't need to put little incremental amounts of region on the pieces because we've got percentage amounts on the gear set and then it scales with our armor values and the we're just going to be getting healed so fast with the catharsis and the buff from the actual foundry so there's no need to go for more just normal region it's it's kind of you're not getting much from it if you know what i'm saying on top of all of this we're going to be getting an additional 30 percent weapon damage we're going to be a status effect is going to be removed from us and we will also have uh, a lot of healing we get a healing cloud that is five percent of our max armor which is high 1.8 million very strong great mask the perfect mask for this setup now unfortunately it's not repair skills it's incoming repairs but we've got armor regen so it's all it all works pretty well not too bad so the modification i've got is crit damage like i said just make your crit chance no less than 54 percent and then put crit damage rolls or even more repair skills mods on this build it's completely up to you mine it heals from zero pretty much zero as uh, shield health all the way to full with the setup i've got now so let's talk about the bag why do i have a skill tier it's quite important to keep put this in into testing if you guys are going to use a build like this so it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to have all blues like i've got now if you're going to be having five blues you need to have one skill tier the main reason for that is because with a shield yellows and blues increase the skill tier of the shield so as you can see it is a tier six shield therefore the health is high so to heal my shield fully i need an extra yellow now, the reason being is because if you look at the hive itself, uh, we get 100% charge efficiency, which is really good. These buffs from the increase of skill tier is very beneficial for this hive to heal my tier 6 shield because the health is really, really high. As you can see, it's 5.427 million. So we need to make sure that we have the extra uh, skill tier. What I would do is if you're going to be going for less blues, that, or like for reds, for example, you'd want to rather go for blues though, because you want to, it scales with everything else here the shield, it scales with the catharsis mask, things like that. It makes you tankier. 
But if you want to go for less blues or maybe less, should I say, less skill tiers on the shield, if your health of your shield is lower, you might not need the extra skill tier. So you can rather roll a red or a blue. It's really up to you on how much health your shield has, if you guys know what I'm saying, because I needed to put this actual charge. Now, if you want to heal as well as I do, it's basically from zero to 100% my shield gets healed every few seconds. That's why it's so good, all that health. So it's very important to do that because with a bag like this, I've got repair skills rolled on it. You don't have to have that. It's up to you to test your setup, how much it heals. So we need to have this backpack talent active, which is gonna be safeguard. So we've got repair skills on the Alps Summit and we've got repair skills and crit chance, very nice. The amount of repair skills you need is up to you. Now with this talent, while at full armor, which while we are, we are at full armor, we get 100% skill repair, which is 100% repair skills basically towards our hive, which then heals our shield. So then this is how this works. This is how we get all of that healing. And yes, I have tested it. When this is not active, we get hardly any heals. So you can just have safeguard for the repair skills. You might not need to actually go for more repair skills than this, but I do with this setup. I actually tried it with a with a blue roll or without this extra repair skills, and it was just not enough. So you need to go into the testing, uh, do your testing for yourself, and see how much repair skills you need. You might even know, think that you know maybe I should rather use a Cheska. I don't need the extra crit chance. It's up to you. Go for something else. You might have a Fenris bag, which could be even more beneficial. It's really up to you. But in this setup, in my case. I needed the extra repair skills and I wanted to use this bag because the problem is, is sometimes when you get a Cheska bag or a Fenris, it's difficult to get the right rolls, the talent and being able to roll a skill tier. So it's up to you how you want to go with this. I think it's really important just to remember that this icon will be active. It'll be on your screen when you are at full armor. So you need to be at full armor to be able to heal your shield back up again. Otherwise, if, you, if you're not, you're going to struggle to heal that up and then you might die from it, especially in a legendary mission where it's clutch it, to have a nice shield with you. So just keep that in mind, guys. Have a look at your shield health and determine how much repair skills you're going to need. Just go outside, uh, go to Lincoln Memorial, stand by the turret that the NPC shoots you, and then pull out your, your shield and see how much it gets healed when you have got safeguard active. So I think for this setup, Fenris will be better if you don't need it because you can put an extra 20% uh, repair skills mod instead of the Alps on one piece. But I think this bag just suits the build I'm using now. So as long as you guys are aware that safeguard works really well with this, this is perfect for me. That extra 20% repair skills is clutch, especially if you want to get more critical hit damage uh, mods on it. Or you can even use a grouper. This is really up to you and what kind of pieces you have. So this build is very powerful, guys. Honestly, the Artificer Hive, the healing power of it to my shield is unmatched. It's unbelievable. My shield can tank so much, I can shoot down the NPCs with my chameleon, get healed by the mask and the foundry. You will, you will be absolutely immortal using this and your shield will be immortal. It's really powerful, really strong. There are a couple of ways you can take this and change it up. That's up to you guys. Let me know your ideas down below. Uh, let's take a look at the stats and hopefully you did enjoy this video, guys. Um, I'm going to leave it to play some gameplay. It's not that much, but I think it, it, it it's meant to showcase the build to you to see exactly how it works. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace out, guys.
Trauma detected.
System reactivated. Get the... Oh. 